So today I'd like to talk a bit about what I refer to as the eight signs of Kensho or the eight signs of Samadhi. So this can be useful for those who are themselves awakening, um, but also for those who are facilitators in order to recognize when someone has had a full Kensho as opposed to uh, merely a, a jhana experience or uh, a lesser samadhi experience. When someone has awakened to their true nature, it's important for the facilitator to recognize it, uh, to be able to reflect back the truth of who they are, to ensure that the conditioned mind does not appropriate the awakening. Um, there's a sort of flip that happens, a flip from the conditioned I to the true self. Um, so what can happen is that flip, there can be this awakening, but then the conditioned mind can come back and um, take ownership or um, reestablish itself as the sense of I. So these, these eight signs are um, extremely useful. These are things that um, I've observed, um, we've observed at the center over the years that we've been doing self-inquiry. So first, I'll use the word kensho to point to awakening. Um, in Zen, the word kensho um, points towards your true self. The word ken, um, the prefix ken means seeing or knowing. Sho means true nature or essence. Um, kensho should not be seen as something separate from samadhi. Uh, in other tr Buddhist traditions, they use prajna, uh, prajna paramita, the uh, realization of your true nature. There's all sorts of different words um, that we can use. The word isn't important. Uh, it can just be a glimpse of your true nature or it can be permanent. So it can last just for seconds or it can be a recognition of your true nature that creates an opening um, for minutes, hours, days, weeks, uh, or it can be a permanent awakening, um, which is more rare. Um, even a glimpse can bring about a profound shift in one's life. A permanent awakening um, is described by Patanjali in the Yoga Sutras. Uh, he describes the purpose or the, the ultimate expression of yoga as chitta vritti naroda. It's the cessation of the whirlpool of the mind. Um, so when the mind, the vrittis, the karma, what, whatever you want to call the mind stuff that is in motion in the unconscious, when, when all of that drops uh, and is no longer obscuring your true nature, um, you could say your, your karma is purified, um, then um, it's a permanent awakening. Um, there's not this, I've got it, I lost it kind of experience. Um, that duality um, drops away and uh, the true nature just is. So there are no unconscious patterns or blocks or archetypes in play, no unconscious motivations in play. You simply are. There simply is what is arising, that separation between subject and object, observer and observed, drops away. There's simply what is. If someone realizes Kensho at a meditation center or during self-inquiry, it's a big deal. Some meditation centers have never had someone who realizes their true nature. Sometimes these lineages will die out because there's no successor. Or people just sit in meditation end endlessly, sometimes for years in um, monasteries, um, 
it, it's like it becomes a parody or a facsimile of the conditions that allow true Kensho to arise. People spend years polishing tiles. I've used that story, that analogy, different times. There's a story where the teacher comes upon a student sitting in meditation, and the student has followed all the rules, um, all the techniques, sitting there meditating. And the teacher comes up and says, what are you doing there? And the student says, well, I'm, I'm meditating. I'm trying to be enlightened. And um, the teacher picks up a stone tile, starts polishing the tile. And uh, the student looks at the teacher kind of per perplexed and says, what are you doing? And the teacher says, well, I'm polishing this tile. I want it to turn into a mirror. And the student says, well, you, you could be doing that forever. It's a stone tile. It's never going to turn into a mirror. And the teacher says, that's what you're doing with these meditation techniques. This doing, this mind, this conditioned mind will never awaken. Whatever your mind is doing, whatever activity you're engaged in, which you call meditation, that's not it. Meditation is when you awaken from that conditioned meditator, that, that doer. Whatever you think meditation is, literally, whatever you think it is, is not it. So it's essential that a meditation or self-inquiry teacher be able to recognize the signs of awakening, of kensho. That's, that's their job. Um, they have to be able to recognize whether someone has awakened from their character or whether it's merely some peak experience unfolding, a jhana experience, meditative absorption, energy, a state. Um, you know, these states, these, these um, jhana experiences, um, they're, they're an infinite variety of them. Uh, some can be very dramatic and powerful, much more impressive than Kensho, which is subtle, the most subtle. Um, it's, it's so subtle, there's, there's nothing to it. Um, so these, these jhana experiences or states um, can sometimes become, um, you know, a very showy sort of thing that can um, overshadow what we're actually doing at these retreats. So what I'm presenting here is just a starting point. Hopefully others will improve and expand on these insights, but I really just want to put this out there. I think it's important and it's come from the experiences at the Samadhi Center here. So the eight signs of Kensho. Number one, the sense of I is no longer referring to the conditioned self when someone speaks. So the person is speaking from their true nature, from their true self. So it's not necessarily the words that they say that matter. There's this clear sense that the sense of I was identified with this character and now I'm awake. It's just me. I'm not limited to that conditioned character. So there's this sense that there was this false I or false occupant, this um, collection of conditioned patterns, which I falsely became identified with. There's a direct knowing that I am the real me, not the conditioned me. So this is the flip. Now, a secondary point, this is number two, 
the second sign of Kensho, it is realized that one's true nature is awareness. And that awareness has always been present. It's always been there. So it's not that I attained something, I achieved some union. This awareness has always been present. It's like, how did I miss it? How did I not realize my true nature? It's, it's astounding. The mind has been searching for things and we miss what we always already are. So the full, the full expression of this in the moment might be, I've always been, I am, I always am, I always have been. Some teachers will say, I was never born, I never die. When we speak from true awareness, that is true. All coming and going, the realm of life and death happens within duality, within the conditioned world of form. So number three, surrounding the Kensho, there can be energetic experiences. It can be an aliveness present. And this is something, it's very subjective. Um, teachers are not always right, but there seems to be an aliveness present. It's like the person really comes to life. Um, there's an authenticity to what they're saying, a directness can feel the truth of what they're saying. Subjectively, um, when there are direct experiences, sensations can be heightened, colors can be more vivid, sounds can be more direct, more alive. They just are. It's unfiltered. It's just happening. When a direct experience is happening, it's usually something that other people can feel. There's a realness to it. There's a, a something, something becomes more alive, more present, more energetic, less robotic. The person seems less contained, more free. Full Kensho, complete Kensho results in Turiya, which is realizing one's true nature through waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. So the dreaming and deep sleep can be indicators that one has realized their true nature. There's a sense that I have been present through even deep sleep. It's possible to observe that the mind and body will drop off. As Dogen says, the dropping off of mind and body. But I, the I am, there's a continuity, there's a sense of beingness that has continuity. It's what we are. It's the, the true nature. So there's this, this ever-present I amness through waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. So if someone reports that they, they sometimes feel like they've not gone to sleep, but then they'll, they'll look back and notice the mind has produced dreams. Um, they've actually can sometimes notice the mind dropping off. So this placeless place of beingness, of knowingness um, is, it's ineffable but there's this sense of unbrokenness or continuity to the experience. 
which is not really an experience because there's no experiencer. It's beyond. Another sign of Kensho is originality. When someone has an awakening, um, there can be an incredible creativity. There can be an articulateness that is uncharacteristic for that person. It's like the higher mind or, you know, they're tapping into just a, a creative level that allows for a freedom of expression. Um, often people who know someone really well, they'll, they'll say, wow, this, it's like someone else has showed up here. You know, it's like a, a super creative, supercharged version of that person. There might be a poeticness that is not normally present, a spontaneity, a freedom, maybe a childlikeness, a playfulness, it can be all different characteristics that show up. Another sign of true Kensho is there's a humbleness. Some people can get excited and want to convey this newfound truth to others, um, but that's, that's always the mind getting involved. But generally, there's a humbleness and a quietness, peacefulness that comes, sometimes for days or weeks after. One is at peace with what is. One is not seeking anymore. There's nothing to do but simply be. So if someone is going around telling everyone I've had an awakening, uh, it's a sure sign that the vrittis have returned, that the egoic mind is in control again. Another sign of Kensho is that one is less likely to get caught in their own stories. They see the stories as the workings of the conditioned self. So if someone is um, engaging in um, talk about preferences, you know, they want something to be other than what it is in the present moment, craving, aversion, all of that, um, that's all part of the conditioned self. So um, there's a, a freedom from that. One's not trapped in that um, story, stories about the past, um, and, and one is more likely to recognize it in others as well. One is able to point it out because you can see the truth. And a person who has awakened to their true nature will often start to exhibit behavior that is in service to others. So at a meditation retreat or at a self-inquiry retreat, one might start to operate in one's own self-structure for the benefit of others, as opposed to the usual egoic behavior. I'd also like to point out Kensho is not a state of awe or profundity, simply awe without an object. It's not merely union, and these, these are peak experiences within the self-structure, when one is in awe in a Sambhakalpa Samadhi experience, you know, it's, a, it's the highest experience for the conditioned self, for the human experience. So I'm not making light of those experiences, they're profound experiences, but Kensho is not an experience. It's not an experience of energy. It's not merging. It's not union. These may be phenomena that surround 
Kensho. It's simply waking up to what we have always been, what we are. It's a little bit like when you're a kid, you believe in Santa Claus, and there's that moment where you recognize that Santa is actually your dad or your uncle just wearing a beard. And there's this, this realization, and you can't unsee it. Once you see the truth, it's with you forever. It's like that. Awakening is seeing or directly realizing the truth of who you are. You can't unsee it. So it's a huge turning point on the path, but it's not full realization. It's not, um, it is and it isn't. In that moment of awakening, if you never believe another thought, then you're fully liberated, then you're fully enlightened. Uh, as soon as you believe a thought, become identified with a thought, um, then there's this, this game of purification of samskaras and, um, you know, the purification of karma. But who, who is engaging in that game? The moment you believe that there's someone in prison, someone that needs to be liberated, you're caught in the delusion again. Or there's an I that needs to be liberated from this false self. One's true nature has always been free. It's never been in prison. This is the cosmic joke. So there's a sense with Kensho of getting the cosmic joke that this this conditioned I that's been doing all this work, that's been going to workshops and doing retreats, you know, it's been meditating, this, you know, learning techniques, learning breathing methods, you know, all of that is happening within the conditioned self. The true self, the true I needs no development, needs no purification, there's nothing that needs to happen in the future in order to be free. In fact, it's only about waking up here and now, this moment, simply recognizing the awareness that is behind this mind that is always searching, the mind that is searching for liberation, searching for freedom, you already have that which you seek. You already are that which you seek. <laughs>